Hello, welcome to Karma's a Stitch April gift make along. Um, I'm Tanya and this is my channel. And if you're new here, this is not a typical episode for our channel. Um, what I decided to do at the beginning of the year is the first Sunday of each month of 2024, I was going to put out a tutorial um, that would show you how to make small gifts, gifts you can make in an afternoon or a weekend, so that by the end of the year, December, if you have any last minute folks that you want to give a handmade gift to, um, you have a few options. So that was kind of the idea behind this monthly gift make along. Um, you do not need a paper pattern for this. This is a tutorial that I'm just putting out. Um, if you are somebody who would like a paper pattern or the written instructions after watching this video, if you think it's something that you would like, um, you are welcome to go get that. Um, I do have a printed version where I've taken the time to write it up, um, in a paper pattern for you. And that is available on my Kofi account, um, which will be linked in the description box below. So, um, this month, this video is going to go up one day late and it was either I was going to rush, 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 rush and put it out and realize, Oh, I forgot something. Or I was going to take my time and I was going to do it right. And I was going to go out a day late because I've been moving and packing and cleaning and painting and all of the things on top of enjoying my family. <laughs> so I'm, I do apologize that this is going a day late. I don't know that many of you will even notice, but that is a okay. So this month's gift make along is going to be something that mm, about three years ago, I was asked to do a test knit for a beaded project. And it is something that I used constantly, but the instructions were um, for the beading portion of it. This project does not have beading, but the final project that I ended up making was something that I've used a lot. Um, it was originally gonna be a cell phone case. I don't know that I've ever put my cell phone in it, but if you've been here for a while, you'll know that I do drive Lyft. And Lyft is similar to Uber. Um, so I have strangers get in and out of my car, or if I go to a Saturday market and I'm in a big crowd of people or hockey games, um, I end up carrying this with me. And it's so often, it, it makes, number one, it makes me feel more secure. Um, yeah, that's basically it. It makes me feel more secure. So when I'm in my car and I have strangers, I'm very worried or I think a lot about if something were to happen, if something were to happen right now, where's my car key? Where's my credit card? Where's my driver's license? Um, and that sort of thing. So let me show you what this month's gift make along is. I'm going to move you back a little bit. Can you see it? No, you can't see it. Either can the strangers in my car. Okay. So in here, this is a lanyard, okay? And in my lanyard, I have my driver's license and my credit card. I have some cash. I have my car key. And I have some lip, lip gloss, okay? And I'm able to wear this without anybody knowing that it's there and I think about my mom. I think about uh, my son on a college campus and some of his friends and his girlfriend on a college campus. And just having all of your important stuff, all of your important stuff, not readily available to strangers. Um, so this is what we will be making. Um, for this tutorial. Now, there are a couple of things I want to point out before we get into the tutorial. Okay. First thing is when you make this, okay, 
and I'm showing you how I go through the process of me measuring how long I want this. I would make it a little bit longer than you think you're going to need it because you don't know how much weight is going to go in here. It might weigh it down and pull it down a little bit because this is an I-cord. Okay. So it might stretch quite a bit. Um, this pouch actually stretches quite a bit to carry a lot in here if you want it to. Um, but yeah, I want to make sure if you're measuring and we'll go through that in the tutorial, I would make it a little bit longer because you can always put a knot in it and make that a bit shorter. And then maybe tomorrow you're wearing a top and you want it a little bit longer. You never know. Okay. So do when you're measuring it, make it a little bit longer than you think you might need it. Don't go shorter. Um, another thing is you could potentially just put this as a little handle. How cute would that be for Alex? Doo -doo -doo, right? Sorry, that was such a corny noise. Clearly, I shouldn't think of Alex when I'm doing these things. Um, so, yeah, I would figure out how you would want to use this or the person you're going to gift it to would want to use it. And um, if you want to make it bigger, this, per this one does have some eyelets. I don't know if you can see them. No, nope, not really. A little bit. Anyway, so this pattern does have an eyelet um, motif <laughs> pattern in it. And yeah, so let's get going. I also want to say that I'm going to show you how to do the measurement for the length, which very basic, but there are three tips that I recorded through this process. And I want to make sure that I put those tips up front so that when you start knitting this, you, um, you are already thinking about these tips. It would be, it's just awful to get halfway through a project and then hear a tip like, oh, that would have been helpful 13 rows ago. <laughs> so I wanted to put these tips right up front so they may seem out of place, but I am putting those in there intentionally. Um, is there anything else I wanna make sure? I don't do much talking in this one because I had the kids and the dogs as I was recording this. And so I was like, I'm not even gonna ask folks to be quiet right now. Um, so I'm gonna have music going softly through the whole thing and I'll have all my background noise muted and all of the instructions row by row will be written on the screen for you. So if you wanna pause it, that's great. Um, you can always watch it as many times as you want to. Um, so yeah, I think that's all. If there's anything I forgot, you'll have a random insert. <laughs> oh yeah, I should have said that. So I hope you guys are all doing great and I hope you enjoy this make along and I will see you soon. Okay, bye. Yeah, here's that little insert of the thing I thought I was gonna forget, but I remembered before I got too crazy. Um, so with this lanyard, I, I just weighed it and it is 17 grams. So I used 17 grams of fingering superwash um, on a 1.5, a US 1.5 needle. So that is what I used um, for this. It's on a 1.5. I soaked it and I laid it flat, but I didn't, I did not aggressively block it, but I did soak it last night. Um, techniques that you're going to need to be able to do with this. You're going to need to be able to make an I-cord, which I do show you. Um, you're going to need to be able to do an I-cord. You're going to need to know how to do yarn overs, knit two together. And you're going to need to know how to do a Kitchener stitch all of which I show you in this tutorial. So if you're, if you're an adventurous beginner, um, I think this is something that is very doable. So there you go. I think that's all. Okay, for real by this time. <laughs>
Okay, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find the spot where we want the beginning or the top of our pocket or pouch to sit, okay? So I want mine to hit me right about here. So I'm gonna get my measuring tape I'm gonna lay this loosely. I'm gonna set this right here. And go here. Thirty seven inches. four centimeters okay that is how long we want our I cord to be okay let's talk about the things you're gonna need I've got a US 1.5 or a 2.5 millimeter DPN set I've got about I, I used about 17 grams of wool you could use cotton a tapestry needle A stitch marker to mark beginning of round. This one was too heavy, so I ended up changing it on the very first row. And some snippets. Okay, tip number one. I have come to the end of this needle. I have one stitch left on my left needle, and I need to do a yarn over okay and knit two together i only have one here so i'm gonna slide my needle through i'm gonna put that stitch up on the other one and with the same needle because you never want i never want a yarn over at the end of a needle or the beginning of a needle so i always put another stitch on around it so there's my knit two together. And now I can pick up my other needle here, my empty one, and do my knit three. One, two, three. And continue on down the way. So again, I try really hard to not have a yarn over at the end or the beginning of a needle. So you'll want to make sure, because it always confuses me on if my yarn just got tangled around the needle, I'll unwrap it. And I don't want to unwrap that because it was an intentional yarn over. And then we continue on the way. It's just a knit row. So I'll knit all the way around. And now this, these knit rows is where I tend to get my needles back to 14 stitches each because I, I may move a stitch or two at the end of a needle so that I'm not ending a needle or beginning a needle with a yarn over. Okay, so I'll count these as I knit them. So needle one, that's 11. 12, 13, 14. So needle one, I didn't move anything. Needle two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Needle two is fine. One, two, three, four, five, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 
11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so I had 14, but I actually moved one to this needle on the previous round so that that yarn over wasn't at the end of a needle. So I'm just gonna put that over here and knit my final needle. One, two, three, four, all the way around. All right, so tip number three. You see how the eyelets have gone down this way, this way, and now we're going back this way. So I've just done my yarn over, and we've got two stitches here that need to be a knit two together. The second stitch was the last um, yarn over. So sometimes it's a little difficult to get your needle in there. So something I tend to do is stick my needle in frontwards, loosen it up a little bit, and then push it, push the yarn with my other finger so that it keeps it a little slack there and then my, my needle has room to go through. Then I can knit those two together and continue on. All right, let's make an I cord. Start by casting on three stitches. I use the long tail cast on. Now you're going to knit these three stitches. Okay, so some instructions will tell you to slip these three stitches back to your right needle. But by using the DPNs, I'm able to just slide the stitches to the other end of the DPN, and then I'll knit these three stitches again. Okay, as I finish knitting that third stitch, I'm just gonna slide my DPN so that my, need, my stitches are at the other end of the needle I just knit them onto, and I'm now ready to knit those three stitches again.
Now I know that a long I chord seems a bit crazy and you just want it to be over, but when you measure, don't pull the I chord and stretch it to make it fit. <laughs> you wanna make sure, like I'm pulling it right here. Don't stretch it to make it fit, okay? When I slid it along the tape measure, I was not pulling it. Okay, so when I'm making these stitches, I am not going in and knitting it. I'm actually going between the first and the second stitch. Okay, so the first stitch has a front leg and a back leg. I'm going behind both of those legs and then pulling through. Okay, I'm not going in as I would a knit stitch. So once I've cast on my 25 stitches, I should have 28 stitches on my needle. The 25 I cast on and the three stitches that came from my I cord. Once I have my 28 stitches, I'm gonna go get the end of my I cord, trying to make sure it's not horribly twisted. Like there's no, I'm not gonna make sure that it's all perfectly straight, but I am gonna try to make sure it's not twisted a whole bunch. Go ahead and turn your work. Now pick up three stitches from the end of your I cord. Anywhere you wanna grab from, pick up one leg from three different stitches at the end of your I cord. Now slide those stitches to the end of your needle if you're using a DPN. Knit those three stitches. Turn your work. Now cast on 26 stitches. Okay, you should now have 57 stitches on your needles and we're going to split those. We're going to have 15 stitches on needle one, 14 stitches on needles two, three, and four.
much ground just to keep on floating. My love is roaring that heavy song. It's been way too long since I almost caught her.
Okay, so at the end of row 14, that will be our pattern repeat. I'm not sure if you can see it, but you have some eyelets going this way and then this way. Now we are gonna repeat rows three through 14, however many times you want for the length of a pocket you want. So I am hoping, let's see here. I'm thinking I would like mine to be probably about four inches. So I'm gonna see how many repeats it takes. I might even do four and a half. We'll see. Um, but that's my goal is I'm gonna just repeat rows three to 14. I'll repeat rows three to 14 until I reach the length that I want. And I'll meet you back here then. Okay, so I just finished my three rows of knitting and it's gonna, we're gonna do a kitchener stitch to close up the bottom of our bag. Okay, so this will be the top where the handle is. We need to close up the bottom. So you wanna split your stitches in two equal parts. And for me, I've got four DPNs here. You see that? So this is, this stitch marker is marking my first needle one. So this is my needle one. This stitch right here would have been stitch one. So I'm going to take these stitches on needles one and needle two. I'm going to get them all on the same needle. So I had 14 stitches on needle one, 14 stitches on needle two, which would make 28 stitches all on one needle. Okay, so there we have my first half of my stitches. Sorry if that went off screen. And then I have needles three and four. Okay, needle three, needle four. And I'm just going to combine those two needles. So I had 14 on needle three, 14 on needle four. I'm going to combine them to have 28 stitches all on one needle. Okay. So if you're doing magic loop or however you're doing this small circumference, you wanna split your stitches in two. So I have 28 on one stitch, 28 on the back stitch. Stitch number one for the beginning of my round is in the front closest to me. And my working yarn just finished my last stitch and it is furthest away from me. Now, what I've, always been taught is when you're going to Kitchener you want about four times the length of the work that you're trying to close up so there's one two three four and I always overshoot it because that's what I do and then I'm going to Get it on a tapestry needle. 
Okay, and this first, these first two stitches are uh, my setup stitches. All right, so I left this on here just to remind me right now with the setup stitches that my stitch one is closest to me on the front needle. My working yarn is coming from the last needle that I worked or the last stitch that I worked and that is on the back needle, but I have my stitches divided in half. Now, you wanna get your stitches as close to the tip of the needles as you are comfortable. And for your setup row, you're gonna put your needle into this first stitch on your front needle, purlwise, pull your yarn through and leave that stitch on. Then you're gonna go to the back needle, first stitch, put your tapestry needle in knitwise, pull it through and leave that stitch on. So now you're ready to do your Kitchener stitch. And this is a four stitch sequence repeat. So you're gonna just do the same thing over and over all the way down until you reach the end, okay? So the first stitch is go into need, stitch one on needle one Go in knitwise and pull it off and pull your yarn through. I'll take that stitch marker off. And then go into stitch two on needle one, purlwise, purl, pull your yarn through, but leave that purl stitch on. Now go to the back, purl stitch one, and pull that stitch off, okay? And then knit stitch two on your back needle, but leave that knit stitch on. Okay, and that's the fourth stitch. So stitch one is needle one, stitch one, go in knitwise and pull it off, Needle one, stitch two, go in purlwise, leave it on. Go to the back, go in knitwise, nope, go in purlwise and take it off. Go in knitwise and leave it on. Okay, we're just gonna do that all the way down front needle, knit, take it off, purl, leave it on, back needle, purl, take it off, knit, leave it on, back to the front needle, knit, take it off, purl, leave it on, back needle, Purl, take it off, knit, leave it on. Front needle, knit, take it off, purl, leave it on. Back needle, purl, take it off, knit, leave it on. Okay, back to the front. You see how it's closing the bottom of that bag up? And it just looks like a beautiful continuous stitch from the front all the way around to the back. I'll show you when we get a little bit more done. So we're back to the front. We're going to knit, take it off, purl, leave it on. Back, we're gonna purl, take it off knit, leave it on. And I am now just putting my needle in and then pulling my work through. I'll show you that again. It just is faster for me. Um, so front needle, I'm going to knit and take it off, purl, pull it through, but leave that purl on. Go to the back, purl, take it off, knit, leave it on. 
Okay, knit, take it off, purl, leave it on. Purl, take it off, knit, leave it on. I'm gonna be quiet now so you can say it in your own head at your own pace. Okay, so when you're at your last four stitches, you're gonna do exactly the same thing. You're gonna knit, take it off, purl, leave it on for the front needle. And then on the back needle, you're gonna purl, take it off, knit, leave it on. Now you've got one stitch left on the front needle. You're gonna knit that stitch and take it off. And you're gonna go to your back needle, purl that stitch and take that one off. And then you can feed this tail into your project and weave it in. Now we're going to weave in our ends. So now, let's really take care of our ends, okay?
Okay guys, what'd you think? I would love to see what you have um, done if you've made one of these uh, lanyards. So if you guys enjoyed the tutorial, please considering hitting like and subscribe. Like I said, I am doing a tutorial once a month, the first Sunday of each month, typically. Um, and that is for 2024. Sometimes knit, sometimes crochet. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye.